Media Day, which serves as a kickoff for the 21-22 season. My name is Todd Bell. I'm the Associate Commissioner with Atlantic Hockey, and I'll be your moderator today. Uh, before we begin, I just want to run through a few ground rules. If you have any questions for one of the speakers, press the raise hand function, and I will call on you in the order the requests are made. Uh, you will be on mute until you're called on, and we'll go back on mute once you finish your question. Uh, we have a hard 10-minute window for each speaker, so we may not be able to, to fulfill every request. Um, and before we begin, before we bring on our first speaker, I would like to recap uh, the results of our preseason coaches poll, which was announced yesterday. Uh, first of all, the actual poll itself, uh, American International, uh, three-time defending uh, regular season champion, was voted the preseason choice as the number one team in Atlantic hockey. Uh, AIC received nine of a possible nine first place votes as coaches are not allowed to vote for their own team for a total of 90 points. Uh, Canisius was second with the remaining first place vote and 72 points. Army West Point is third at six, with 69. RIT is fourth with 64. Sacred Heart is the choice, is the fifth place team at 63. Uh, we had a tie for sixth between, between Niagara and Mercyhurst with 50 points apiece. Bentley is eighth at third with 35. Air Force is ninth with 28. And Holy Cross is 19, is a 10th with 19. Um, our preseason player of the year is Colin Billick from Army West Point. Uh, Will Calvary from RIT and Chris Theodore from AIC also received votes. Um, our preseason rookie of the year is goaltender Jack Sybil from uh, Niagara. We had quite a few uh, folks that received votes in that balloting, including Jack Conroy from Air Force, Lucas Linder, and Reggie Millett and Evan Stella from AIC, Cooper Kyle from Bentley, Jay Ahern from Niagara, and Connor Hutchison from Sacred Heart. Uh, our preseason All-Atlantic hockey team actually has seven players on it as we had a, as a tie in the defenseman category. Our forwards are Colin Billick from Army West Point, Will Calvary from RIT, and Randy Hant Hernandez from Canisius. Uh, the, we have three defensemen, uh, Dan Willett from RIT, Drew Bavaro from Bentley, Joseph Maziars from Mercyhurst, and our goaltender was Jacob Brzezuski from Canisius. Uh, those are the results of our uh, preseason coaches poll. And give me just a minute, moment here, and we're going to bring on uh, our first speaker, who will be Air Force head coach, uh, Frank Serratori. Give me just one second here, folks. Okay, coach, uh, you're on with us. We have Air Force head coach, Frank Sartori. Coach, you'd like to make an opening statement and then we'll uh, take questions. You bet, Todd. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Sir. Not... yes, sir. Go right ahead. <clears throat> I struggle with this technology sometimes. You know, I'm an old guy, but uh, I hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, we're excited about uh, the beginning of a, a new season. Hopefully, uh, we'll have a real season as opposed to uh, what we went through last year. Yeah, uh, very unusual. Like this is a this is some this is a different animal. I've been in collegiate athletics for decades, for decades, and uh, this is a, a, a we're going to, we're dealing with a different animal. I <clears throat> there's only one time that I can that I can ever remember knowing less about my opponents, and that's when I went pro. Uh, I went from the University of Denver to the International Hockey League, <clears throat> and uh, and obviously wasn't familiar with the pro hockey pool and, and knew very little about it. Uh, and uh, there's, of course, there's reasons for that. Uh, you know, one of the reasons we only played 13 or 14 games last year. So we hardly had a chance to see anyone, let alone get familiar with them. And, and then like I used to track teams by the players that they had coming back and, and what I knew of the freshmen that they had coming in from junior. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot more components to it right now. I mentioned my experience in pro hockey, and this somewhat mirrors it. 
collegiate athletics is now part of the free agent society. And uh, with, a, with, a, with the grad transfers, the one-time transfers, the fifth-year seniors, I personally don't have the time or the interest to track it. Um, we can't, uh, and I probably can speak for Brian Riley as well, the service academies, we can't get involved in the transfer game. They, like it's a spectator sport to us and uh, we aren't allowed to carry fifth year seniors. So basically I focus my energy on our team, where we are and what we have. Um, you know, with the transfer options now, it doesn't look like many teams are building or rebuilding totally from the bottom up. Not so with us. Like we got to do it the old fashioned way. We got to recruit freshmen and we got to develop our own players. There's no quick fixes for us. Um, like I said, I don't know much about our opponents, but I, I'm, I figure like we've got to be the youngest team in the country. We have only one experienced fourth year senior, only one experienced fourth year senior. We got no fifth year seniors. Some teams have sixth year seniors. We have no grad transfers. We have no one-time transfers, you know? Uh, so like, we've just got a, a, a very, very young team and it's a, a bad year to be a very, very young team because collegiate athletics is gonna be very, very old with all the factors that I, that I just mentioned. But with that, like we like our group, uh, we've got a young group. They are a spirited group. They're highly motivated. Uh, they're a very proud group. Uh, we're enjoying working with them. Uh, our, uh, our captain, it's the first time I've ever had my goalie uh, be one of our captains. Alex Schilling is one of our captains. Uh, Willie Rhyme, who's a junior. Uh, Blake Bride, uh, who is a junior. Uh, and Luke Rowe. Those are uh, our captains, uh, three uh, guys that also only, the only one experienced senior that we have. And I guess, you know, for us, you know, we're going to, as a, as a group, we've got to crawl before we can walk. We've got to walk before we can run. We know that we are going to be playing against some experienced, battle-hardened teams. And uh, we just got to keep uh, our chins up. We've got to keep continually uh, make improvements. And ultimately, Todd, like we want to become, like every year, we want to become the team that nobody wants to face in the playoffs. Okay, thanks, Coach. Uh, we are going to go ahead and take questions. First up is Kate Shefty. Kate, go ahead. Hey there, Frank. How are you? Good, Kate. How are you? I miss you. <laughs> Good, thank you. Um, you just mentioned your captains. Uh, when you you let your players choose, uh, when you saw what they had provided, goaltender, guy that didn't play a lick of hockey last year, um, what were your thoughts? Uh, I think they nailed it. Um, I, I think they nailed it. They they got the uh, uh, they got the four. Like we've got, obviously, all of us have a lot of uh, all of our teams have got a lot of guys in their locker room that bring a lot to the table and different types of leadership styles and whatnot. But uh, the combination of the guys that, that our team selected, to be honest with you, our coaching staff couldn't have done a better job ourselves. Okay, next question is from Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hey, Frank, how you doing? Good, Ken. Uh, Frank, uh, given the fact that you're a young team, does this kind of help you or allow you to reshape how Air Force hockey should play or do you do you plan on sticking with, you know, the old ways? You know, it, it's a really interesting and good question. Uh, like we, every once in a while, usually like one team kind of morphs into the next team. And very rarely do you, do you really turn the page and, uh, and the torch is really passed. And uh, we had eight seniors last year and uh, those seniors all went on. And um, with only one you know, last year, Schilling being our really our only junior, we had all freshmen and sophomores. So with, with all those seniors graduating and only one junior moving up to be a senior, there really is a changing of the guard with our team. It, it, it's a new look. It's a new group. And uh, again, nothing against the, uh, the, the group we had last year or the previous year. 
but it's a new look Air Force Falcons. And uh, and uh, uh, we are, you know, it, it is. We're like, we're going to play Air Force hockey. I mean, we're not going to uh, continually change, but but uh, the dynamic of our team, the personnel, uh, you know, just the, uh, the the feel in the locker room, the uh, the environment, uh, uh, all that is it, it's really it's really fresh and new. And like I said, usually in college athletics, you kind of go from one year to the next, and you know the the sophomores become juniors, the juniors become seniors, the seniors move on. But there's continuity. This, there really is a, a it, it's a it really is a, a changing of the guard uh, in regards to uh, our team from, uh, you know, from last year to this year. And, and uh, to be honest with you, like I said, it, it's, it's, it's refreshing. It's new. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's a little scary because we're so young, but uh, uh, we're having a good time with these guys. And uh, you know what? These guys are really excited. You know, they were all young last year, all freshmen and sophomores. Uh, they're, they're excited to have the keys to the car. I can tell you that. Okay, we have time for one more question for Coach, and that'll be Kate Shefty. Kate, go ahead. Jack Conroy for, um, got some votes for Rookie of the Year this year. What can we expect out of him? Uh, Jack Jack Conroy is is no longer on our roster, so that uh, that can, we can answer that question in a in a quick hurry. Uh, great young man, uh, uh, just uh, didn't work out. Okay, Coach, thank you for your time. We're gonna. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We could take one more question here. We do have time for one more. Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Uh, Frank, so based on you know what you said, uh, do you have a good feel for your talent this year? Do you are you comfortable with it? And what kind of style do you expect to play? Well, well, Ken. I mean, we we play uh, Air Force hockey. Uh, like we want to uh, we want to be tough to play against. We pressure the puck in every zone. Uh, we're not a, a team that sits back and trap. We're, we're going to play the way we play. Like that's our identity. It's we've been successful with it. We've won nine Atlantic championships uh, playing that way. And, um, and we're, uh, you know, are we going to tweak this, tweak that, make an adjustment here, make an adjustment there? Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, like the, we, like we know more about what we have. It's the unknowns, like our opponents, like we don't know, like, if we just the, the dynamic of collegiate hockey is going to be so much different this year. And, um, you know, hey, we, we're, we have to make some uh, adjustments. Uh, we've got to do a better job in recruiting. We've got to do a great job in retention, knowing that players can, can transfer. And uh, like like we've got to uh, we've got to evolve. All of us have to evolve. You either evolve in a situation like this or you go the way of the dinosaur. And um, I think in closing, I think I hope that answers your question. Uh, in closing, we're very excited about the season. We're very excited about our exhibition game uh, against Colorado College at Robson Arena. Uh, never, you know, it's going to be an exhibition game, only an exhibition game, uh, but it's going to be the grand opening of Robson Arena. It'll be a, an exhibition game that's going to be uh, on, the, on the front page of the, of the Gazette uh, Sports, I, I would imagine, Kate. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're excited about the season. We don't know much about our opponents. Uh, you know, us, we're young, but we like our group and we're, we're, we're excited to, to see uh, uh, what the future brings. Okay, coach. Thank you very much. We're going to give you your day back. We appreciate you stopping by. Okay, next up, we're going to be bringing in Eric Lang here in just one second, if you just bear with me. Okay, we're now on with uh, AIC head coach Eric Lang. The Yellow Jackets were voted the preseason favorite in our coaches poll. Coach, I'd like to ask you to make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Awesome. Thanks, Todd, and welcome aboard to you. Um, this is like the fifth year in a row I get to follow Coach Saratori here on Media Day. Um, not, not an easy job. Maybe we go reverse alphabetical next year, but um, I'd like to first start by just uh, acknowledging the, the season from last and, and um, kudos to our administrators, our athletic directors, our league office, and, and making the best of, of not a great situation. 
Um, we're able to crown a regular season champ. We were able to crown a, a, a postseason champ. And, um, you know, the trainers, a lot of hands on deck to make that season a success. So I uh, want to make sure we, we, we give that it's, it's due. Um, obviously looking, uh, just looking forward to a, a season with, with some more normalcy and, and a routine. And, and I, you know, Frank had mentioned this a little bit where you can pre-scout your opponent and, and the game doesn't get canceled on Thursday and you're trying to fill someone in for the weekend. So, so just getting back to normal routine college hockey, obviously always uh, an exciting season, exciting time of year for, for everybody here. And, and for us at AIC, we, we lost a few good players, Brennan Kapchak, Toby Flatteby, uh, Stefano Durante, guys that won a lot of hockey games here, guys that were key contributors to our program. Um, that being said, we do return. We have 23 returners. Um, we've got five transfers uh, that, that we think we did a, a nice job in the transfer portal. Uh, I, I believe this could be one of the deepest teams we have ever had just from some early viewings here. I'm not quite sure if we have a, a real high end first line, but I don't believe we have a fourth line either. And, and um, like I mentioned, this could be the deepest team we've certainly had here in the, in the last five seasons. Um, just some non-conference stuff. Uh, we, we'll get off to uh, playing some of the best right away. We'll have an exhibition game with Boston College here in 11 days. And then it's right into Providence, followed by UMass. And then we, we play a really good Army West Point team. It was a Final Four team. And then we go from there. We pivot right into Quinnipiac two times. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd put our non-conference schedule up against anybody's in the country in terms of difficulty. Um, the good news is, is, is our league has gotten exponentially better and, and we're now able to get some of these, you know, get some home games. So we'll have UMass in here. We'll have UConn in here. We'll have Providence in here. We'll have Quinnipiac in here. And uh, we're really excited about that. And, you know, I, I had a call, call our SID and, and we've got a neat opportunity here at AIC. We, we have an opportunity maybe to be the, the first uh, league champion to do it four times in a row. And obviously Air Force with their great success and, and RIT's had some great success and um, you know we, we've got a neat opportunity to try and to raise a, a fourth banner in a row here and, and that's the that's the challenge at stake for us and um, I think across the board when you look at our league I think our league has gotten exponentially better um, be it the transfer portal be it the, the, the quality of venues we now have and, and our recruiting is better than it's ever been. And, um, you know, I, it'll be a, an exciting, hard, for, hard fought um, Atlantic hockey season. And um, we're just kind of excited to get going here. Okay, we'll take uh, questions again, just hit the raise hand function on your computer. And first question is uh, Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hey Langer, how you doing? Great, Ken. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, Erica, for starters, uh, how, how uh, strange was it to delve into the transfer portal? And could you tell us, you know, a little bit about who you got? It is, it is a little unprecedented in terms of um, being able to, it is like a free agent market. And I heard Frank talk about that and you get to get in there and, and you have a lot of data on these players and you can you know, you're getting a more finished product and um, getting transfers here at AIC. We, we've, we, we've been in that business long before the transfer portal. We had to do it the old fashioned way though, where a guy would have to sit the season. So, um, you know, a couple guys that were really excited about Brian Regali, who's a transfer from UConn. He was a, a former captain there. He's going to come in and do a, a grad year here. He's a, a USHL player, had a really good career at UConn. We recruited him very hard on the front end and uh, things didn't work out and he had a great career at UConn and, and now he's going to join us. He, um, he looks like a guy that could be a top six guy for us. Um, another player by the name of Chris Van Oshaw, who was a Canadian junior A player of the year. He scored almost 60 goals in a season. And, um, you know, he comes to us from Minnesota state and potentially looking for a bigger role than, than maybe what he had over there. And, and he has certainly um, showed a lot of promise here early, a, a guy that we think could could fill a role of a Toby Flatteby and potentially be a 15, 20 goal guy in our in our 
you know, in our league. And um, another guy we're really, really excited about is Brian Kramer from Robert Morris. Um, he was a top defenseman in our league last year. He certainly looks the part um, right away here for us. And, you know, we lose, we lose probably our, our best player that we've had here in the last 10 years or so in Brennan Kapchek. And, um, and Brian Kramer looks like a guy that, that could certainly help fill that role. So, you know, th those are three guys that we're, we're excited about initially here. And, um, you know, on top of that, like I mentioned, we have 23 returners from a season ago. Okay, we have a question from Chris Lurch. Chris, go ahead. Chris, you're on mute. Sorry, sorry. Hi, hi, coach. Um, how much of a challenge is it to bring in players, you know, um, from other schools, um, most of which are just going to be there for a year? What are the challenges in integrating them? It's a great question. And I think uh, the one thing that, that we've done a really good job of here is making sure we bring in the right people. And, um, you know, at, at one point there was over 250 to 300 names on that transfer portal. And we were super selective in the type of player we wanted to bring in here and, and, and really selective in terms of, is he a good fit? And, hey, we're, make no mistake about it. We're a mom and pop shop here at AIC. We're, we're not Boston College. We're not the University of Michigan. Um, we need guys to, to, to fit into what we're trying to do here. And some of it based on opportunity some of it based on past relationships, like I kind of mentioned with Regali, somebody that we recruited really hard. Um, and, and a lot of it is, you know, the best recruiters in our program are our current players. And to have a guy to say, hey, I played with Regali or I played with Brian Kramer, he'd be a seamless fit here. Those things are really important. Um, it was probably an opportunity for us maybe to, to, to get involved with a potential higher end player um, we're, we, we work in terms of, are they a good fit here? And, and, and are they, will they be proud to be a yellow jacket? And, you know, Brian Regali is a kid, like he couldn't wait to get his Yukon helmet off and he can't wait to get his Yukon hockey pants off. And he's proud to wear the black and yellow. And, and really those are things we're looking for when we're, we're getting involved in that market. Okay. We've got time for one more question. We'll go to Seth Salt. Seth, go ahead. Coach, uh, you know, in, in past years, we've had kind of somebody who's functioned as the guy, you know, Blake Christensen, Brennan Kapchek, you brought up, you know, now you've mentioned this year that there's not necessarily a first line, even though there's a lot of talent and that it's the depth that's going to take over for us. Um, how does that change the way we play hockey? Um, not necessarily having that, that one guy that you know you can put out there, but having a whole bunch of parts to choose from with, obviously still plenty of talent guys like Chris Dodaro, Justin Cole, Elijah Barigon and on like that. No, it's a good question. I, I say the strength of our team is the team here. And, um, you know, we can, we can play four lines. Um, you know, we have a fifth line right now that we think could, is every bit as good as our second and third line. So um, the one thing we've learned is, you know, even last year, you know, playing through this pandemic um, there's never enough guys that can contribute. And um, you know, I stole this line from Brian Riley, but he always said, Hey, the numbers will take care of themselves. And, and you know what, we've got a little bigger roster than most and internal competition has always driven our program. And um, it allows us to hold guys accountable to a high standard. And if you don't meet the standard, we're going to move somebody in um, that can get the job done. So um I go back to the, the strength of our team is the team and our depth. And, um, you know, I, I'd be slighted to say like Julius Jan Honen um, has taken, he's a, a, a Finnish player for us. He last year was his first year over here in North America. And we saw glimpses of greatness um, from him in practice. And, and we, we got glimpses of it in, in terms of the games. Um, and he was a kid who, who got COVID and he was, missed 28, 30 days at a clip. Uh, Julius Yan Hone and looks like a, a high end um, NHL type prospect for us. And, um, you know, we're used to seeing the progression. You see a freshman come in and he kind of climbs the ladder and he's on the third step and he's on the fifth step. And by the time he's a senior, he's at the top of the ladder. 
Um, Julius has, has like skipped five or six steps along the way here. He, he, he does look different than, than anybody else we have right now. And, um, he, he would be a guy that, that, that could be a difference maker for us. And, um, you know, he, we're, we're excited about Julius's, uh, progression here in our program. And, um, he, he would be one guy that, um, he will jump out of the page. Um, if you're watching closely. Hey, Coach, thank you for your time. We're going we're gonna to let time. you go. Appreciate it. Yep. Right. Okay, next up is going to be from the U.S. Military Academy, be head coach Brian Riley. Give me just one second to bring him on. Okay, Coach Riley, you are with us. Uh, if you want to unmute, you can go ahead and make your opening statement. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Todd. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, hello to everyone out there. Obviously, it's great to be on the call and uh, following one of my old guys here, Langer. It looks like he's already got that playoff beard going, so that's a little scary. Um, Hey, we're really excited here. Obviously, you know, it, it looks like knock on wood that hopefully we're going to get back to a normal year. And um, I know that our players, our, our, our staff, our fans, um, everybody's keeping their fingers crossed that uh, it turns out to be the normal year that we're all hoping for. Uh, a little bit to what Frank said, because I think we're kind of in the same boat. Um, college hockey's changed and, and it's, it's, uh, whether it's free agency, the bottom line is for us, uh, we're going to have to stay with the traditional way of doing things as far as rebuilding. We won't have the opportunity to reload and, um, that's okay. Like, uh, like I said, you, you, one thing you hear about West Point, you have to learn to adapt. And, um, so we'll continue to do things the way that we do it from a recruiting standpoint. One, one thing I'm really proud of uh, this past year is when it would, it would have been really easy for players to transfer and get on the transfer portal. Um, I think we're one of, I don't know how many schools in division one hockey that, that didn't have a player on the transfer portal. And I think that speaks to the culture of our program. Um, so uh, I do believe that our programs uh, in a good spot and, uh, our guys do a great job guarding the culture every day. Uh, we did bring in eight freshmen. Um, we're excited to see uh, what they bring to the program. Uh, saying that, I think it starts with our with our leadership group. Um, you know, we have two captains, Colin Bielek and Eric Butte. We have two alternates uh, in Daniel Hyder and Thomas Farrell. Um, Colin Bila could probably be one of the best leaders that I've ever been around. Um, obviously, he's a great player, but uh, he just brings a passion and an energy to the rink, along with uh, Booty and Hyde. Like Ever since they got here on campus three years ago, four years ago, our practices have uh, been unbelievable uh, because of uh, the energy and the attitude. And as a result, that's kind of filtered to, to other players. So uh, we're in a good spot with their leadership. I think the strength of our team, I, I told everybody last year was the experience in our back end, starting in goal with Trevin Kozlowski. And uh, we had three seniors last year, uh, Zim, Fleck, Berkey, uh, I felt really, really uh, like that was going to be the strength of our team, and, and it proved to be that. Uh, and this year, that's the big of our team. Uh, we just don't have much experience. Uh, well, we do have some, um, but we are lacking the experience that we had going into last year. And the only way to get experience is by playing, and our guys are going to learn pretty quick when you open up the season at Providence. Uh, then you come back for two with RIT, then go out to Wisconsin for two, and then uh, two with Langer's team. Um, 
yeah, uh, our guys are going to kind of get a little bit of baptism by fire here early. And ultimately for us, uh, like every year, I say the same thing. We just want to be playing our best hockey coming down the stretch. So thanks, Todd. Thanks, Coach. Okay, we'll take questions. Again, just hit the raise hand function on your screen, and we'll, uh, we'll get you going here. Okay, first question is Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hey, Brian, um, can you uh, talk a little bit about uh, the freshmen coming in, and do you expect any of them to make a, you know, immediate impact? Yeah. Uh, good to talk to you, Ken. Um, I've always kind of been uh, early in the year to try to um, maybe go a little bit of an older group. Uh, we do have some freshmen that we feel confident will be in the lineup. Um, the one thing about being a freshman, I don't care if it's at AIC or, or any other school, but certainly at a service academy, um, every day can be a little bit of a roller coaster. So what I mean by that, some days when our plebes or our freshmen come up to the rink, you can tell that they've just been in survival mode. And, and um, so you go through a lot of that the first semester, by the time the second semester comes back or comes around, they just seem to be a lot more comfortable. And, and so uh, we'll have to go through a little bit of that. Um, I think here with our freshmen, but I'm just thinking, uh, you know, we have a kid, Joey Baez, who was um, had a lot of success, scored a lot of goals in the North American League. Uh, Josh Boline, who uh, was a Wisconsin decommit. Um, and we've got a handful of other guys, like I said, eight freshmen who uh, they are excited about the opportunity to um, hopefully contribute to our team here this year. And next up is uh, Jamie Gatlin. Uh, Jamie, go ahead. Hi, Coach. How are you? Hi, Jamie. So how excited are you to have fans back in Taterina Tater after only playing in front of students last year? And how do you think that will impact your players? Yeah, you know what? I mean, it was kind of amazing last year um, not having the fans at, at first. I didn't know how it was going to be, but we had some unbelievable games um, in here and, and on the road. So the players adapted to it. We were able to have, uh, I think, like 100 cadets in here for our games. And at times it felt like it was 500. But um, just the atmosphere with, with, with having fans, I, I think, will be completely different. And it kind of helps make college hockey what it is. So uh, really excited for our not only our fans, but our players to um, to be able to play back in front of good crowds, whether it be whether it's here at, in Tate Rink or or on the road. But um, yeah, looking forward to that. This will be the last question for Coach uh, Ken McMillan. Go right ahead. Ken, go ahead, Ken. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Brian, with uh, Kozlowski gone, uh, what is your situation in goal and how comfortable or uncomfortable do you feel about that? Well, I've been going to church every morning. I think it's like a 615 mass. So I'm hoping that helps certainly with the start because uh, we have two games experience uh, in goal coming back. Um, so not going to lie, like there, it's still yet to be determined. Um, I think we have good goalies. They just don't have the experience. But um, if you want to have a good team, you got to have good goaltending. So uh, right now, uh, Justin Evenson, he, he would be our starter. Um, he did play a couple games last year. And um, so, but we do feel like with Gavin Averick right behind him and then Evan Zari, a freshman, that uh, the opportunity is going to be there for somebody to um, take charge and run with it. It's last year, early in the year. Um, I, I think we had an early game maybe at Bentley. I, I, I'm not sure, but Trev didn't play. I mean, he hadn't played in, in a while, so we came back with, um, we came back with Justin and, and he pitched a shutout. Uh, so 
we know that there's something there, but then obviously Trev got a goal and, and he never gave the net up. So uh, hoping maybe something like that can happen with, with one of the guys that we have here now, but um, they're going to get tested early. Like I said, with, with that early schedule that, that we have. So we'll learn a lot about our goaltending uh, right off the get go. Okay, coach. Thank you for your time. We're going to let you go. Appreciate you stopping by. Thanks, Todd. Okay, we're going to bring on uh, next coach will be Ryan Soderquist from Bentley. If you give me one second here while I bring him, bring him over to the. Okay, Coach Soderquist, you're on. You're on live with us. You can pop your mic off, and you can make an opening statement, and then we'll take questions. Hey, Todd, how are you? Thanks for having me on. Uh, Thank thanks, you, obviously, to all the media that's on today. We appreciate your help with the league and the coverage that we get from you guys. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, opening statement from us. Uh, obviously, we're excited like every team in, in uh, September and October. Uh, excited about the group that we, we return. Very excited about the new guys that we have. Uh, we have a very strong uh, non-conference schedule this year. Uh, games with Northeastern Harvard, a couple of Ohio State, UMass Lowell. Some good home games in there as well with Ohio State being here for a couple, UMass Lowell, uh, home game with BC uh, as well. So excited about our non-conference schedule, really excited about our group that we return. Uh, incoming freshmen look uh, to be adjusting very well to uh, college life and to our program. And uh, quite frankly, we're just really excited about this group and looking to build one day at a time. And um, you know, like, like most coaches out there, you're just trying to build through the first half of the year and, and being the best hockey team that you can be down the stretch for player. Run. Okay. We'll take questions again. Just hit the uh, raise hand function and we'll get you on with coach. Okay. First up, Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Very good, Ken. Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you. Um, just to touch on what you just said about uh, the, the scheduling, I remember a time, you know, maybe 10 years ago where it was difficult for Atlantic hockey to pick up some, you know, quality non-league opponents. And now it seems like you guys are rich uh, in that throughout the league. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think obviously the league's come a long ways and facilities helps that as well. Uh, you know, every team in our league is now playing in a, in a nice facility, whether it be on campus or a pro facility uh, off campus. So, you know, that ha helps quite a bit. Um, you know, for us this year to have to bring Ohio State, uh, a school that big into our, our uh, university is great. To have Boston College come here and play games here is, is, as well is, is great. So, you know, scheduling this year, quite frankly, we actually had to push a couple home games off uh, onto the road uh, so that we were a little bit more balanced on the road, which is ironic. You know, back in the day, we fought hard just to get one or two home games. And, and this year I had to uh, push a couple non-conference home games onto the road uh, so that we had a couple of them uh, so our guys could experience a couple road games. Questions for Coach? Okay, another question from Ken. Ken, go ahead. Uh, all right, Ryan, give you just give us a feel for your team this year and tell us about the addition of your, I believe, four transfers. Yes, we're so we, we feel very strong that we're um, a very deep team, uh, structured very differently than we've been in the past um, by, by uh, you know, our work of recruiting. We had uh, historically in the last couple of years probably been a little top heavy, uh, relied a, a lot on one line, uh, relied a lot on our uh, first power play unit. Uh, we took a hard look in the mirror and uh, we wanted to get back to kind of our identity and culture as a team, uh, being a very deep team, having good depth, good culture, good leadership, uh, the ability to play to our identity. Uh, so we did that through uh, obviously the recruiting of our freshmen and our additions to our grad kids that did come in. Uh, those guys all come here based upon who they are as people. Uh, we brought in, you know, two captains, uh, guys that have come, that we have recruited before. Three of the guys that we brought in for grad school and transferred in, we had recruited very heavily before. Um, that's what we've known them and their families for, you know, six, seven years now. Uh, so I feel very strong, uh, that we worked very hard to change our identity, uh, and who we are and how we play the game. Coach, um, after what everybody went through a summer ago, what was it like this year to have a little more of a regular 
or close to normal off season compared to last year. Yeah, it's been great. I think you take, you know, take for granted. Well, now you don't take for granted just being able to walk in the arena every day, um, jump in a locker room in one locker room versus being spread out in four or five locker rooms. Uh, so, you know, the ability to just come together and gel, we have a lot of new guys, we have grads. So the ability to come together every day in one locker room, come together, have team meals, have team outings, uh, the ability for team building, uh, you know, those were not opportunities that any, any program had last year. Uh, uh, so, you know, th those are really important in September to be able to bring the guys together. Uh, so that's been exciting and it's exciting to, you know, get, you know, season tickets back out there and know that the school's excited to come down and support us uh, and have those fans in the building again. Okay. Okay. We have another question from Ken. Ken, go ahead. Ryan, you just mentioned about the team identity changing a bit. What identity are you trying to find? And is it kind of difficult because you have such a short preseason? No, I think that obviously our identity was, you know, is what we worked hard in the recruiting process. Um, it is something, you know, quite frankly, I saw over the last year, a couple of years in our program that we had become, you know, probably a little heavy ended on skill, um, you know, top heavy on that first power play unit. You know, if those guys didn't produce, you know, was our depth scoring going to pick it up? Uh, you know, so, you know, quite frankly, our, our identity is, you know, to play fast, hard and relentless. Uh, we want everybody on our roster to be in those in that category. And uh, we definitely have the depth that's going to allow us to do that this year. Okay, I think we have time for maybe one more question. We'll go to Joshua Cummins. Josh, go ahead. Hey, Josh, how are you? Awesome. Uh, who are just kind of with that new new team that you're you're emphasizing new style? Who who are maybe one or two guys that have been in the program before that you're looking to see uh, kind of take another step that would have been in the program? Yeah, just you, you mentioned kind of the the new guys already, but but who 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 are you kind of looking to for? Uh, uh, just kind of take another step. Yeah, I mean, obviously we have guys like, you know, uh, Hamlet is the guy's, uh, he's actually back for another year, but he's a guy that plays to that identity. Uh, we have some, you know, obviously, like I said, some of the new new guys that are going to play to that identity as well. We got uh, Brandon Walkham, who's uh, uh, one of our captains this year, a guy that plays extremely fast. He plays hard. Uh, he's a great leader. Uh, you know, be quite honest, Josh, I, I, I know our skill level is still where it is. Uh, I'm just really excited about the group in terms of playing faster and harder, uh, playing for each other, uh, not being you know selfish, you know, get our penalty minutes down. We've worked very hard in recreating our program this year uh, and feel very confident uh, in that. So obviously there's some individuals that will, you know, lead the way there, but I'm just excited about the team and, and, and playing more team hockey. Uh, and getting back to nuts and bolts. And, and that's originally how we've built our program over the years. And quite frankly, I think we slid from that a bit and we're looking to get back to who we are and, and who we've always been. Okay, Coach, thank you. We reached the end of your time. We appreciate you coming by today. Thank you. Okay, give me just one moment here. We'll bring on our next speaker. That's gonna be uh, Trevor Large from Canisius. Okay, we're now joined by Canisius head coach Trevor Large. They were the, uh, voted the number two team in the preseason uh, AHA coaches poll. Coach, I'd like to make an opening statement, and then we'll uh, take questions. Sure. Thanks, Todd. Um, you know, I, I, I sit here very similar to lots of coaches in the conference. We, we, we are excited about our team. Um, we're starting on brick one. And, you know, that's something that I think is ultra important. We had success last year, but that doesn't define what our success will be uh, this year. We have a very positive group. We're very excited. We have a team that can really skate and can really work. That's what we've seen so far in practices. And as we sit here as a coaching staff, we have high expectations, but we know to get um, to get the goals that we want, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put in the effort in lots of areas. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys would have about the team, um, our leadership group, or obviously anything anything that you guys require to know about Canisius. Okay, first question is going to be from Chris Lurch. Chris, Chris, go ahead. 
Hi, Coach. Uh, good to talk to you. Um, you return almost intact from last year, um, and you've added, I think, 10 new players, um, I think seven from the portal and three freshmen, if I got that right. What are the challenges uh, of integrating that large group into an, an existing group? Um, the, the, the challenge is for them to, one, to be welcomed and valued for who they are. Whenever you're bringing in a new staff, new players, um, you know, that's the first challenge that they get comfortable as soon as possible and feel welcomed and valued for who they are. Um, from there, it's just the reality of um, showing them, explain to them what it means to have a griff on your chest and for them to believe that and believe in the program. Um, whether they're coming from junior hockey or another college team, it's, it's really irrelevant. Um, they're, they're, they're no longer transfers. They're no longer freshmen. They're Canisius hockey players. And we have one year with this team. There, there are a good chunk of new, and there's a whole bunch that is returning. Um, both are equally exciting. But I would say, Chris, that, that's definitely the challenge is for them to understand as soon as possible what it means to wear this crest on their jersey. Questions for coach. Okay. Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hey, Trevor. Good to see you. Um, can you, you give us a, give us a insight into um, some of these transfers and, you know, who do you think, you know, might really uh, seize major roles? Um, sure. Um, you know, I would say in no particular order and um, we're, we're starting to get to, pardon for me for correcting, correcting Ken. I don't mean to do that. I know you guys have to call them transfers, but as soon as, you know, they got here, it's no longer that. Um, but if you look at it um, on the, on the surface, there are some, uh, they all bring something. That's why they're here. They, they all bring something, but obviously with Randy Hernandez coming from Robert Morris and being, uh, you know, having a great season in our conference, that's one that's pretty easy for us to talk about and point to because we were able to see him in our conference, how he does. So, there's obvious excitement about Randy. Um, and if I'm looking at the six others, I can go through the whole name, the, all of their names to go, <clears throat> they're going to, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be valuable. They, they are going to play, whether it's a depth role, a penalty kill role, which can be hugely important. Um, whether it is production, the expectations for, for all of them are to come in and be who they are. Um, create an ultra competitive environment in practice. And when we get into games and a little bit of the reality is they don't have time to waste and we don't either. If you're coming in with a year or two or three, um, I like that message to them that you need to buy into what we're doing, maybe more so than if you were coming in as a freshman, because you have no time to waste and we are ready um, to have a heck of a season. So that. Um, with the returning guys and some of the guys that are new, that's been the feeling around our team is we are getting ready. We're not ready yet, but we're getting close to being ready to play some games. Got a follow-up from Ken. Ken, go ahead. Uh, so give us a sense. Uh, you know, you came so close last year losing in the finals, uh, but with a great ending run. So how much of a carryover effect is there? And is there a sort of a culture change here in uh, Canisius? Uh, carryover, yes. Culture change, no. Um, you know, I, I when when I think it happens in sport. Whenever that happens to any team at any level, professional level, college hockey, um, college athletics, um, it sits with you, or at least it should. If you're competitive enough to want to win a national championship, um, uh, when you get close to an NCAA tournament, and we're one win away, um, and really one period away. Right. It was 2-2 going to third third period against our, our champion AIC. And for a lot of guys, that has it sits with you the whole summer. That can be a motivating factor, and it absolutely is here. Um, the expectation is to win. We don't, we're not looking to play to play. We're not looking to, you know, play to gain experience. I think those are real, real things, but the reality is our group is ultra competitive and we're we want to win every game. We're playing to win every single game. So that's a, I wouldn't say that's a culture change, but when you get a taste of winning and it gets in your bones, um, it can motivate you to make sure that it continues. Coach, uh, obviously two years or summer before last was a little unusual for everybody. 
this year has probably been a little more normal. Was there anything you guys did in the compressed off season last year and the different off season last year that you carried over into your off season program this year or your preseason yeah. program this year? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, you know, I, I think as coaches, we're always sitting here, you, you take what happened in the season and you don't start from scratch. You're looking to build, um, you know, the, the reality of being on zoom calls, just like we are now. Um, did I think those things were going to be, have big benefits at the, you know, go back two years ago. I, I didn't see that as something in coaching that could be a benefit, but going through meetings, talking hockey with guys in, in a format like we are today, um, that has been one of the carryovers. I think it was part of our success that even without practicing, what were the creative ways that we could teach our players how we want to play? Um, and that reality has definitely carried over this year as a, a little bit of a benefit to the chaos that we've all been through is how are we teaching these guys how, how we want to play? And I think we saw some success with that last season. Questions for coach. Got another one from Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Trevor, do you see a different attitude in players this year because of the chaos you mentioned last year? Do the, do, is there a lot of positivity? Do the people think that we're going to sail through this season, you know, hopefully with no, uh, no issues? I think there's a balance to it. Um, I think for everybody as society, we're, we're, we're guarded, right? We're, 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 we're trying to figure out an unknown and that can be really challenging. I think for some people that are anxious, it brings on more, you know, anxious feelings, more anxiety. Um, I think what we learned is we have a plan. We, we try to execute the plan. Things can change what that plan is. You can go left or right. I know I talked about it last year that there was, um, you know, the, the definition of adversity, um, you know, was that adversity or was it a big inconvenience and how each person understands, you know, how do we get through a global pandemic and focus on hockey that has some really big challenges. Um, lots of things happen to, to people. I do feel a little bit of there's some relief that's happening. We're not all the way through it, but just having human interaction the way we we, we normally do um, feels like it's starting to come. And I do feel that positivity, positivity from everybody around campus, the guys in our team, to our staff, the fact that we can get really close to what normal is, is an absolute positive thing for everybody. And I just hope it continues. Got time for one more question. Okay, coach, I guess we're going to let you go. I appreciate you stopping by and thank you for your time. Thanks, guys. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll be bringing uh, our next panelist on here at 1155. We're going to give you just a couple minutes to uh, get everything ready to go and we'll, we'll stay on schedule here. Bear with us. Okay, we are now joined by the lone first-year head coach in Atlantic Hockey this year, uh, Bill Riga from, from Holy Cross. Coach, uh, if you'd like to make an opening statement, then we'll, uh, we'll take questions from the group. The floor is yours. Let's go ahead and unmute yourself and you're, you're all set to go. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, coach, you're all set, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, so I think the theme for Holy Cross this year is, is change. I mean, we, we're, uh, we have a new president, uh, now we're going to have a new athletic director. Um, our entire staff is new. Our athletic trainer is new. Our SID is new. Our equipment managers are new. So, uh, there's just a whole lot of change going on, uh, with the program, uh, including to the facility itself with video boards and enhancements. Um, so it's an exciting time here. Uh, that said, there's a lot of uncertainty that goes between everything being new and the players. And, and I give our, our captains, Matt Slick, Anthony Vincent, and Ryan Liebel a lot of credit for um, absorbing all this change and, and turning it into positive energy and bringing it on the ice. And I've been, um, you know, really.
impressed with the work ethic and the passion. I think some of the result from last year um, in the wins column and, and in the standings, um, I feel like they think that was a little bit of a, an anomaly and that's not really how they feel their teams should have performed. Uh, so there's a little bit of a chip on, on the shoulder, um, but even as a new staff coming in, I mean, coming from different leagues and um, I think Frank was right earlier on when he said that we don't know a ton about you know, everyone and uh, even on our own team here, uh, we've been watching a lot of video on that, but also, uh, you know, our opponents and, and um, who's going to be on what team for transfers and such. So it's, it's, it's new in that way as well. And there's going to be a learning curve. Uh, I think like everyone else, we have a very challenging non-conference schedule, but, but that's what we want. You know, we, we want to play against the best teams we can and raise the profile of our program and the league. And, and we're excited to do that and, and can't wait to get started here with our exhibition game uh, a week from last Saturday. Okay, Coach, thank you. Uh, we will now take questions. Uh, first one is going to be from Chris Lurch. Chris, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Uh, congratulations um, on the new position. What has uh, so far been the biggest difference uh, for you from you know, being the associate at Quinnipiac for so long to your first head coaching role in college hockey? Uh, I think it's been, you know, certainly not a surprise, but but definitely true that there's a lot of things that go into being a head coach that have nothing to do with hockey, per se, uh, that take up some of your time. And I think it's important uh, to, to have the staff members that you trust that you can delegate things to that, that really take that pressure off and allow you to do those things. And and my staff with, with Caston Summer and alum here and, and Eric Sorensen and Bobby Butler and our hockey ops, Blake Heiler. Uh, certainly have done a really good job with that so far. Um, so I've been able to take care of all the other things as well. Uh, but it's a lot of fun, you know, it's, you, you're an assistant for a long time and now it's on you to, to make the, the difficult decisions. And certainly as coaches, we, we strive for that. And uh, it's been exciting. Okay, questions for coach. Okay, next up, Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hey, Bill, welcome to the league. Um, Bill, is it, uh, you mentioned that there's no, so much new things going on at Holy Cross um, and with the hockey team. So um, is it kind of good to kind of put the past in the past and start anew? And did you address that with the players that way? I did address it. I think when you come into to a new program, and it, the first thing you need to do is take some time to evaluate. You know, you evaluate the personnel and you talk to them and, and, and the administration and find out what's been good and what maybe can be better um, and, and kind of try to take it day by day and, and push forward. Um, I would say that the, the change uh, was not met with any, any begrudging, you know, resistance. I think it was just, all right, this is what we're doing. We're moving forward and, and we're excited to do that in a different direction. And I think motivated by, last year's results, uh, they've been aggressive and um, excited to, to kind of take these steps and move in a different way. Got a follow up from Ken. Ken, go ahead. So um, I know it's still early and, you, and you're still trying to find out about this team, but can you give us a sense of what Holy Cross hockey is gonna be all about? What kind of style of play would you like to uh, employ? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get too much into it for competitive reasons, but I think it's going to be a bit of a different style, obviously, um, with, with my experiences and, and that of the staff, uh, probably a little more aggressive and maybe more pace. Um, but there, there's going to be an attack mentality um, to, to what we do here. And, and uh, I'm not certainly making any any statement as to you know what the team did last year and previous years, but I just know what we want to bring to the table uh, and how we want to play. And, and I think it will be different. Coach. Okay, here we go. We've got another question from Ken. Ken, go ahead. Uh, Coach, with um, obviously coming into a, a new league, I know you're familiar because you, you know, you were at Quinnipiac, so there's probably a lot of familiarity there. But uh, what's it like for you to have to learn about the, your opponents this year? And, of course, the transfer uh, portal changes the dynamic even more. So what's it like for you to get adapted on the fly here? Uh, coming from a heavy recruiting background, 
you, you kind of seen a lot of these players along the way. And when you look at the rosters, you're familiar with, with some of their skill level and ability. And certainly having played non-conference, I think at some point against pretty much every team in the league over the past 17 years, uh, you know, it's been a little bit of a, of an easier transition in that way, but in terms of getting to know the ins and outs on a yearly basis of coaching staffs and really delve into, you know, what, what's the core of each team's identity, but that's going to take some time. Uh, it, it's been fun and it's been a lot of video hours trying to figure that out. Uh, and a lot of that's going to be learned as you go because everyone's evolving and everyone's um, putting new, new wrinkles in and, and getting better and learning new things over the summer. Um, but it's been it's been fun. It's been a, a breath of fresh air, and and the transfer portal has been, you know, challenging. I mean, I think every program's got their their things they need to overcome, and and certainly in the end, I don't think anybody, no one's really going to feel sorry for any school for what their limitations are. So it is what it is, and it's a results based business, and we're going to use everything that we have at our disposal uh, to to move forward and and uh, in, in the new in the new league and for us anyway, as a staff, uh, and uh, have as much success as possible one day at a time. Coach, what's it mean for the program to be able to host the icebreaker to open the season this year? Yeah, it, it changed a little bit along the way in that we were going to be able to have it on campus. And then we did, had some, uh, the, the video boards got delayed. So there's construction going on. So we moved it downtown and uh, it's one of the, you know, the early season marquee events in college hockey. And we're bringing three national powers into a downtown Worcester uh, on, on a Friday and Saturday night and on television. So it's going to be kind of a, a great way to start the new era here. Um, and show people the kind of things we're trying to do and put Holy Cross, you know, on the national stage right away. Okay. Questions for coach. Ken McMillan, go ahead, Ken. Coach, uh, what's it going to be like facing Quinnipiac a month from now? Uh, that's going to be interesting. I, uh, I've thought about that actually a few times, and it's going to be interesting being on the other bench and certainly – there's going to be a lot I know about their personnel and how, how they do things. And, and there's going to be a lot of things probably in how we play that they'll be familiar with on how they probably figure I'm going to want to do things. But the one thing I do know is it's going to be emotional. I mean, I spent, you know, 13 years of my life there. I met my wife there. I had my kids there. Uh, there's a lot of people that I really care about there. Um, and it, it's going to be emotional for sure, but we need to get past that and, and get down to it because they are an extremely extremely talented and deep team this year and uh, we're going to have our hands full but uh, that being said coming here uh, coming home and growing up nearby and playing youth hockey in this rink I'm excited for the next chapter here uh, for me and my family personally and, and to be here at Holy Cross. We've got a follow-up from Ken. Ken go ahead. Coach where do you see Holy Cross's place in New England college hockey and what are your goals and aspirations for this program? Um, I think everyone knows that Holy Cross is a, is a great school and a great location and a great academic tradition. And we've certainly had success as a program uh, earlier on in, in, our, in, in our history. Uh, and I think I, I see that as somewhere where, where we can build a lot of things. You can build, you know, on the recruiting base and the style and the fan, and the fan base and the alumni have been a, a great, great surprise. Not really a surprise because I knew in the, in the um, interview process, but they've been a great resource for me and the passion they have to push this forward. And uh, we're just trying to get, you know, everything going in the right direction in terms of, you know, our facilities and obviously our talent and our, and our place in the standings. Uh, and if we do those things on a daily basis, our, our profile is going to rise uh, in New England here. And we've certainly gotten off to a pretty good start with getting some local kids um, committed uh, for future years. So we're trying to increase our footprint here in New England um, and, and move the pro profile higher. Okay, Coach, thank you for your time today. Uh, we're going to give you your day back and let you go, but we appreciate you stopping by. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we're going to be joined momentarily here by uh, Mercyhurst head coach Rick Gotkin. He is the dean of head coaches in Atlantic hockey. This will be his 34th season with the Lakers. Coach, I'd like to make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Thank you for joining us. 
Coach, you're on mute. Can you there hear you me go. now? Yeah, go ahead, coach. Go oh, okay. Ahead. It's all yours. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, no people that know me uh, know that I'm a little bit uh, computer illiterate. And between uh, uh, the Zooms and the uh, the team meetings, you would think uh, over the past year, you think I'd be a little bit better at this. But uh, listen, I'm just uh, excited to be here. Um, I appreciate everybody taking the time uh, uh, this morning into this afternoon uh, to be part of this. Um, I think for... For me, and I haven't heard a lot of the other coaches, so I don't know what they've said, but um, I think for me, uh, it's just excitement uh, coming off last year and uh, still going through some things here, you know, in the world with, uh, uh, with the pandemic and whatnot. I think it's just refreshing to know, uh, uh, hopefully know that we're going to have a, a full season and uh, going to play a, a full Atlantic hockey schedule. Uh, I know our players are extremely excited. Uh, our staff is extremely excited. Uh, uh, we felt very, very fortunate last year to be one of the few teams that really was able to play most of our games. I think we, uh, I think we missed out on uh, maybe four total games last year. So uh, we were pretty excited to be able to just accomplish that, uh, uh, that big uh, feat last year. And I know this year we're all excited to play, uh, you know, 34 games plus. So, uh, you know, we, we're excited about our team. Uh, we've been a young team the last two years, which uh, is now becoming an older team. Uh, we only graduated one senior defenseman last year. We've added a couple of uh, what we think some key elements. And uh, we can't wait to get, uh, get started with our uh, scrimmage here, October 2nd, up at the University of Vermont. Okay, Coach, thank you. Uh, questions from the floor. Okay, Isaac Petkak, first question, go ahead. Hey coach, uh, first I want to just ask you about having Ryan added to your coaching staff. I mean, clearly with his experience and his knowledge and, and with the relatively young goaltending core that you have, how nice is it to be able to have him uh, on your staff this year? Yeah, you know what, uh, having Ryan Zapolsky, who as you know, is an Erie native, uh, played hockey here for four years and uh, then went on and had a, a tremendous minor league uh, professional career here in the States. Um, and then uh, played in the KHL for a couple of years and then obviously capped it off with the uh, Olympic team a few years ago as their starting goaltender. But, you know, he's an absolute great kid, comes from a great family. Um, and, uh, you know, he is going to have, he's, he's already had a, a, an immediate impact with our, with our goaltenders. Uh, our three goaltenders have really warmed up well to him. And, uh, you know, he wants to coach uh, as part of his profession moving forward. And obviously this will be a great step stone for him uh, but he's also a guy that's going to add a lot to our our program and obviously especially with our goaltenders next up is chris lurch go ahead chris hi coach um most teams are carrying extra players this season you know mostly as a result of the additional year um is any consider also be made to potentially losing some players for, for a time due to COVID protocols to having a larger lock um, roster as a result? Yeah, you know what, Chris, that's a great question. We've, we've always had a pretty large roster, you know, I mean, you know, we have to, just like any program, you know, we have to keep all our resources, uh, you know, in-house, you know, it's not like uh, professional hockey where a player goes down or something happens and somebody comes up from uh, the minor league team or, or whatnot. So, you know, we've always been comfortable with 28 to 30, 31 players in our on our roster and that's what we have now we have 31 and three of which are goaltenders we have uh, <clears throat> five plus forward lines and uh, nine defensemen uh, so you know we uh, we always have a big roster uh, certainly COVID is is a big big concern still for all of us uh, we're hoping that uh, you know we can stay uh, healthy um, we're hoping if there is a, a case or two that we're able to uh, maintain that our training staff our school has done a great job with uh, with, with all of that, you know, through the crazy year last year and certainly, you know, getting into this year, this year feels uh, a, a lot better. Uh, we're way more optimistic in being able to, you know, put a full team on ice for, for practice and then hopefully for games. But uh, yeah, I suppose COVID is in the back of all our minds, but it, it really does, Chris, feel like things are getting uh, back to normal. Next up is Ken McMillan. Go ahead, Ken. Hey, Rick, how you doing? I'm good, Ken. How are you? 
Good, thank you. Uh, Rick, you had probably one of the youngest rosters in Atlantic hockey, if not college hockey, last year. What were the challenges of that, and what's the benefit of bringing back so many players? Yeah, you know what, Ken, uh, uh, as you know, <laughs> last year was a big challenge for, for all of us. Uh, and certainly having a young, uh, young group uh, added to some of those challenges, um, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, we tried to last year, Ken, add some offense. You know, there was a lot of years where our team really went on offense and we were pretty good at it. And then through graduation, a couple of guys uh, signing professional contracts and leaving early, uh, you know, we lost some of that offensive kick but you know a couple of the guys we added last year like Carson Briere and uh, Austin Heideman uh, Dante Sheriff uh, you know those were three forwards that had a pretty good impact uh, over 21 games for us last year and we're hoping they could at least pick up where they left off you know quietly uh, Jonathan Bendoff who is a uh, a junior for us scored 11 goals for us in those 21 games so um, we feel like the offense is starting to come back, uh, but we really feel like the strength of this team is from a defensive side. You know, our, uh, we have a, a defense core that's been together almost for four years now. A lot of these guys have played well when, you know, when, when wins were hard to find uh, two years ago. I think we won a total of five games. and. Uh, we, we, we couldn't win because we had a hard time scoring goals, but defensively, we thought we were pretty good. You throw on top of that, you know, our two goaltenders that played last year, you know, uh, Hank Johnson, who was a grad transfer from Bemidji, uh, played very, very well for us. And now he's back for his fifth year. And then we had the freshman, uh, Kyle Johnson. Uh, that uh, I'm sorry, uh, Kyle McClellan, who uh, who played uh, uh, from Thanksgiving on, and uh, he had a very good year. So we we think our goaltending is at, at the very least good. Um, you know, it might be it might turn out to be great. Um, we think our defensemen are, are pretty good season back there, and we think we've added some uh, some some offense over the last year. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty excited. I mean, we think we have a solid team and a very, very good league. Um, and we like to think we're going to be in the mix when this is all said and done. We have a question from Isaac Petkak. Isaac, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, I want to ask you just a follow-up on goaltending. Uh, you talked about that they could be a great unit. I mean, what are some of the things that you'd like to see from them, some of the things that they'll have to work on through camp, preseason, in the year to get them to that great level um, come – latter stages of the season here yeah you know we we saw great signs last year and last year was last year but uh you know we really you know it's very comforting for a coach to know that you have three solid goaltenders and and the guy i didn't ma mention was uh matt lentz who's a who's a freshman and uh uh you know he he comes with some pretty good uh, experience as well but uh you know we we need our goaltenders you know there used to be a time where you know we would get out shot you know 55 to 20, you know, and we need goaltenders to be unbelievable. We just need our goaltenders to really be solid, you know, and very, very confident that these three guys, uh, uh, you know, Hank uh, and Kyle uh, are really capable of being solid. You know, I, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to have to necessarily, you know, win us games on their own. You know, I think really as a group, I think this group has matured and there really seems to be a, a, a very good sense of maturity. And it's, uh, it's hard to describe, but just being around the locker room and being on the ice a couple hours each week with the guys, uh, there's a real seriousness. Um, they, they seem more mature. They seem more focused both on and off the ice. Um, and I really think that this group is capable of doing some, some really, really good things. I, you know, I, I would go as far to say that this probably is going to be our best team uh, in probably the last two or three years. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. We appreciate you joining us today. We'll give you your day back. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to swap out speakers here. Our next speaker, just one moment. We're going to bring on Jason Lammers, the head coach at Niagara University. Let me get his screen moved over here. Okay. Again, we have with us uh, Jason Lammers, the head coach at Agri University. Coach, uh, you're live. If you'd like to make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Yeah, first, I'd just like to thank everybody for being on the call. I appreciate all of you and what you do to promote Niagara University, to promote our league, 
and uh, to promote college hockey in general. We just, we all know that's such a great sport and a special sport and uh, appreciative of your efforts and your work. We're, we're certainly very excited and optimistic for the program and in our short time here, us and AIC are the only two teams to play in the last couple uh, final fours of our league. So it's been really exciting for me as a coach to see the steps that the, the program has made since I've had the chance to arrive and had the honor of, of being the coach here at Niagara University. Uh, it's fun to watch the steps that the league is making and just how competitive it is. And we had our best season to date in my time uh, out of conference last year with some signature wins by a lot of programs, including ours in, in our league. Uh, our alumni have stepped up in a massive way and we have incredible support here and enthusiasm on campus and from around the world with our alums and how they're helping us from recruiting and fundraising and uh, just very appreciative of the efforts that they've made and, and how they're connecting with each other. The, the culture that we have here is, has been really fun to be a part of in terms of how much each, we believe in each other, uh, how much we believe in ourselves and the behaviors required to match those beliefs. So we're, we're excited about the outcomes that could come from this season and, and uh, what's ahead of us in this journey that, that is a hockey season and the ups and downs that take place through the hockey season. Uh, offensively, we, we have a good group of forwards. We're looking to out depth teams and really come at people in waves. I don't know that we have a, a signature guy right now yet, but uh, we're looking forward to how we can produce and, and uh, out team other teams. Defensively, we have some really good players back there. Chris Harper, our captain's returning. Jack Zielinski, fifth year guy. So it's great to have them back for their fifth year and they really anchor a very good decor. And then uh, similar to Mercyhurst, one of our real strengths is gonna be our goaltending with Chad Veltry and uh, you know Jacob Seibel earned some awards uh, last year for his season and, and obviously through the league this year as well. So uh, special teams wise, we're, we're hopeful that we can match what we did last year. We led the conference in our PK and uh, we're helpful to, hopeful to do that again and, and see our power play maybe move up a step or two. Questions for coach. Okay, we'll start off here with Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hey, Jason, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ken, thank you. Uh, Jason, you have a, a, a unique uh, roster this year in that you, you lose about seven seniors, but then you had a very junior heavy roster last year, and now you add about seven um, uh, transfers. So it seems like you've got a, a wealth of experience to, to work with. How's it, how's it all coming together? Yeah, we, we, uh, I appreciate the question, Ken. We have five transfers. We're... Uh, we, we had a great day today. We just got done with practice. We had a great day today. Our intent on the ice and our focus and our ability to pick things up as a team is the best that I've been here with. So I'm, to answer your question, I'm elated about it. Uh, I think it's a spectacular situation that we're in, in terms of how fast guys are assimilating the information that we're giving them. And then you put in how hard our guys work, how relentless they are, and how competitive they are. I'm I'm pumped as a coach. And you haven't played a game, right? But I'm pumped as a coach. Okay, Ken, with a follow-up, go ahead. Uh, so Jason, obviously you said that, you know, you've had success getting into the Final Four uh, recently. How do you get over the top? How do you make it happen? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great question. And, and how you can't control the outcome right? You can control the, be, the response and the behaviors. And so we're just going to continue to focus on what we can control. Can't control the ref, can't control the other team, but we're just going to continue to get better. And we want to get better in a couple key areas. Special teams is one of those that I mentioned. We want to see our power play take a step. That would be a spot. Uh, the, the second spot would just be to continue to create some more second chances offensively for us. We, we, uh, uh, we're good initially, and then we need to have a second and third chance on the net. And so we've, we've tweaked a little bit of what we do and how we do it offensively to give ourselves some more chances. Uh, 
with a question from Ken. Go ahead, Ken. Jason, what's the what's the buzz in Western New York about uh, Niagara hockey? Yeah, the the buzz is the buzz is awesome. Like I said, our our alumni have been outstanding uh, on campus. Everybody knows that we want to be regionally dominant, nationally prominent, and so people are fired up about our non conference schedule. People are fired up about the league and and uh, what we can do in league. So we're we're really looking forward to. Uh, not only competing in our league, but giving our, our our men an opportunity to play outside of our league against some great opponents. Coach, and I, I would tell you, I've been Ken. I've been around a little bit, right? I've I've had been very blessed to work for some great coaches and for some great universities. And uh, obviously, Minnesota has got a hockey tradition. New England has a hockey tradition. But I think Trevor would agree with me over there, Canisius, that. Western New York is right there with those those two areas in terms of New England and uh, Minnesota. Hot people live, breathe, eat, die hockey here, and so it's just wonderful to be a part of it. Ken, with a follow up, go ahead. Uh, Jason, just looking at your schedule, I mean, talk about uh, a killer schedule. It's a very challenging non conference and all. Uh, what do you think about the the task ahead with that? And also, what's it like being able to schedule such uh, high caliber opponents? Yeah, I just to your point, Ken, I think it speaks to the buzz around Western New York and what the program's done, that people want us in their building uh, and can help them sell tickets. I believe our job is to help us turn this league into a two-bid league. And if we can have success when we have success outside of our league and then do what we believe we can do internally in our league, that's going to give you a chance if you make a whoops in the, in the league tournament that you still have a chance to make the tournament. So we're hopeful to take advantage of that schedule. And uh, really we get to play on national TV. Uh, we get to play against Michigan, who's got eight first round draft picks, right? Penn State's my home state and, and we have people from the area. And then North Dakota, we have some people west of the Mississippi on our roster. So we get to cope, play close to their home and have their family see them. So, Everybody in our program is, is really excited. We're having an alumni bus that's going to the game, all those games. Uh, we have people from campus joining us. We have fundraising people joining us. It's, they're just wonderful events for us to take advantage of. Coach, after everything, you know, everybody dealt with a year ago uh, in the preseason, what has it felt like to have a more normal preseason this year? I mean, what's something maybe you took for granted that you probably won't anymore yeah. from a coaching standpoint? Yeah, so we had eight to 10 guys last year spend 75 days in quarantine. Uh, we had 12 total team practices last year. So I feel very blessed that I get to show up to the rink every day. And with this, what we've been going for three weeks, we started after Labor Day. We taught, we've had more practices to this date right now than we had as a team any point last year. And I think that just goes to show the culture and the environment that the guys have created and how competitive they are, that they were able to stick it out last year. But now you add the chance that we actually get to connect and have team meals and be around each other this year. Uh, there's a lot of excitement in our group. Okay, Coach, thank you for your time. We appreciate you joining us today. We'll uh, let you have your day back. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate everything that you all do and look forward to having a great season. And thanks for being on the journey with us. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Your next coach up, as soon as I get him moved over here, will be uh, Wayne Wilson from RIT. Give me just one moment. Okay, here we go. I'm now joined by RIT head coach Wayne Wilson. Coach, uh, you're on. I'd like to make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Sure. Uh, again, I guess, uh, thanks for being here. Everyone uh, appreciate it. I'm sure all the coaches have uh, expressed their excitement for the start of the year, uh, and uh, we're excited uh, as well here at RIT. Um, you know, it's, it's funny uh, going through the preseason here and, and trying to pick uh, the standings and some of the voting that went on and never, never seeing the other side all last year. And and even the recruiting was different uh, with uh, instat and uh, you know you're watching your own players but you never really saw too many complete games where you saw other people's 
players. So it's going to be an interesting year that uh, there's a lot of unknowns on really what uh, everyone's going to bring to the table and, and what their strengths and weaknesses are. <clears throat> I'm sure it's been referred to with the, the transfer portal and, and uh, players returning. So uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of unknowns with your opponents, but uh, I'm really happy about our, our team. Uh, we were very fortunate uh, with the transfer portal that one, we didn't lose anyone and that we had four players uh, decide that they wanted to come back and work on their masters. Uh, and so that was, uh, I think, big for us. Uh, and we added uh, one transfer to our team. So, um, I, you know, really happy with our play last year, offensively, uh, special teams, power play wise in that, but we needed to do a better job defensively. Uh, we had three freshmen and a, a transfer sophomore. So we had four new players to our team last year. And, and uh, I think it showed uh, an, a few times uh, last year. And, uh, and having said that, uh, sometimes having to be forced to play all of them because of COVID situations and things like that. But uh, I think getting Dan Willett back, uh, him deciding to come back and get his master's will add uh, the, the experience that we need. Uh, Gianfranco, uh, a transfer from uh, UMass, we call him JoJo, but uh, adding him, uh, Doug Scott, a freshman that uh, come in this year has made a, a pretty big impact uh, through our, our training uh, uh, play so far, and uh, he's made an impact. And then the, just the natural maturity of uh, our freshmen going to be sophomores. A very fortunate because at one point we didn't think we were going to be playing a year. Uh, very fortunate to have played 20 games and uh, get those practices in because our freshmen from last year are way better for it than if there was no play or practice at all last year. I can't imagine what that would have been uh, like entering this year, having not do that and uh, seeing that some of the teams around the country are going to have to do that. Uh, that that's going to be a very difficult task, but uh, excited for the year. And uh, I should point out our leadership, our two captains and, and Will and Dan leading the way, but our assistant captains and, and Petrucci and Bruce and Walker are, are, are great uh, leaders. And, and we're looking forward to seeing where they take this team. Thank you, coach. Uh, we're going to take questions now. First up will be Chris Lurch. Chris, go ahead. Hi, coach. Hi, um, <clears throat> RET fans have always been such a big part. Uh, the atmosphere, um, not having that last year, what, what was that like and your feelings on hopefully having the stands full again this year? Well, it's certainly going to be welcome to have, uh, you know, our fans, the, the corner crew and the pep band. And, you know, it was weird, but, you know, I think the players adapted to it very well. It's not what you want, but it's what you were dealt and you deal with it. It, it, it was weird. I think coming out for the start of the game and, and hearing crickets, quite frankly, and, uh, but once the puck was dropped, um, you know, you're right into the game. And I felt the same way even when we have fans. Hey, coach, did you hear that song we played? I, I Sometimes it, that's all tuned out. You're so focused on your team and, and the play on the ice. And I think our guys did that last year. But uh, they're certainly going to be welcome back. And it's going to be great to, to have uh, everyone back in the building and, and feel some more normalcy, I guess, to our game and, and uh, playing at RIT. Okay, next up, we have a question from Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hi, Wayne. How you doing? Good, Ken. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, Wayne, uh, given the chaos of last year, not only with the program being put on hiatus and then coming back and then COVID, do you guys, do you think you achieved as best as you could? Um, you know, that's a tough question. I think all teams went through different things and different phases. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I you know, from our season being canceled to then playing and, um, you know, getting 20 games in and being able to come to the rink every day. I, there was lots of obstacles, uh, different locker rooms, uh, mass on the ice, uh, you name it. You, you kind of went through it and, uh, I, you know, you have different people. We had one player that uh, never got COVID, but was out for 60 days <laughs> because of close contact. Um, so, but I, you know, yeah, teams that got it, uh, almost the whole team got it before the season started, and they didn't have to worry about all the tests, and they just played, and then they had to worry about it at the end of the year. So it was what it was, and, and my, I tip my hat to anyone that was able to get through it and experience it, uh, but we are happy that there's more normalcy. I don't think it'll be completely normal just yet, but uh, we're on the right track, and, and I think uh, uh, hopefully the fans and the players can all 
enjoy what will be closer to what uh, real college hockey is like. Okay. Question from Ken, go ahead. Uh, Wayne, given the, um, you know, the personnel changes and all, what did you want to work on following last year? And do you think uh, you'll be able to uh, find improvement in those areas? Yeah, I, really for us, it was our defensive play. We wanted to get better defensively and it's probably pretty simple on that. And that's what we kind of dove in. I think every coach goes through some different projects they want to look at uh, for the course of the year. Now, when I say that defensively, we were very happy with our defensemen and, and, and the forwards that were playing defense. But when you're, when you've got three freshmen and uh, uh, you know, a, a sophomore a transfer that didn't play much at all, it, uh, it uh, took its toll and you, you can't make up for experience, but the fact that they got to play they're they're older. And that's really why with the, the one transfer that uh, you know, we're not, we're not going to be a big transfer team. We, we like our guys and we're going to be loyal to our players and, and try and keep them here and, and that, but we just needed to gain more experience back there. And I, I think we've done that. And uh, I think we're a much different team uh, uh, and our back end, and uh, we're going to emphasize that uh, a little bit more. But uh, offensively speaking, we should be able to play with anyone in the country. We are right up there offensively, both power play and scoring goals. It, it's keeping the puck out of our net that we're going to have to be better at. Other question for Ken. Go ahead. Wayne, what do you think of the job Atlantic Hockey Management did in keeping that season moving forward last year? Yeah, difficult. Uh, you know, it took so many different turns uh, throughout the year, uh, uh, re rescheduling all our games, trying to get some, uh, you know, balance to your schedule. But, um, I, you know, every league did the best they could, and uh, and, and so did we. And, uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. And uh, we got through it. And like I said, we're better, we're better for it, for what we were able to do last year than uh, if we didn't play at all. Okay. Questions for Coach? Other questions from Ken. Ken, go ahead. Wayne, uh, you know, COVID it was was awful last year, but it's still around. So, what's the what's the feeling going into this season? Is it kind of like that over the shoulder look of you know, oh, I hope this thing stays away? Well, you don't take anything for granted. Uh, we're a hundred percent vaccinated, so you know we're doing our our bit to to at least uh, give ourselves a chance of of uh, having one a successful season, but two just having a season. So I think uh, everyone is learning how to live because this is never going to go away. I think it, it still may be uh, around right now. It'll be probably around a little less, hopefully next year and the year after, but I think it's going to be here to stay. It's how you cope and, and do you do the right things to try and prevent the spread and whatever you can do. But we, you know, we were at one extreme last year. That's that's for sure. And uh, this year, at least so far, it's, it's been a much better experience for uh, players, coaches, and, and uh, society in general. And, uh, uh, but, you know, you're going to have to still be careful and, and take the, the necessary precautions and uh, optimistic and do the best you can. Coach, is there anything that uh, you guys had to implement last year in the kind of a different preseason model that you carried over to this year after using it a year ago that you thought, hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's keep doing this. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to think about that. Uh, <laughs> big question, though. Uh, you know, I, I, I just think that um, the appreciation uh, of, of playing games uh, became that much more prevalent. I think um, as a coach, I know what coaching uh, means to me, but I, I think it was that much more pronounced from the players that uh, how much uh, – you know, the game really means to them and, and what such a big part of uh, the student athlete experience that the, the playing of the games is to everyone. But, uh, uh, you know, so I, I think you, you learn to, uh, I guess, maybe harness uh, you know, the disappointments and all that. You, you live to, uh, you know, it is a game and, and you, again, you want to be good, but I think, uh, I think everyone uh, relax a little bit more and uh, and just be ready for whatever comes up. Okay. Coach, thank you for your time. We appreciate you joining us and we're going to let you go. Thank you so much, Todd and everyone. Yep. Okay. Next up should be our final coach to join us today from uh, 
Sacred Heart University. We joined by head coach CJ Maritolo. Coach, you're on screen with us now. Uh, if I can make an opening statement, then we'll uh, we'll take questions. Let's go ahead and unmute your uh, microphone. You see me? Yes, sir. Go right oh, okay. ahead. All right. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Uh, I know you've been on the call here for an hour and a half or so. So um, just want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their day uh, to take part in this. Um, there's no doubt here at Sacred Heart, it feels like it's back to normal um, in terms of uh, us being able to practice all together, being in the weight room. So um, uh, kind of it's creating a great energy within our group. Um, and assessing our group right now, uh, we feel we're going to be a, a blue collar, hard working group. Uh, when you look at our roster, that's what we see. We see a team that's going to win by committee. And that's the kind of mentality that we're going to take on. Um, in terms of our forwards, we feel we have a lot of balance and depth. Um, it's been hard to figure out who our top line is, second line, third line, fourth line is right now. All lines could play a a real fast paced 200 foot game and they're all going to be expected to, you know, contribute offensively. Um, our decor, it's uh, an area that we really targeted in our recruiting efforts last year. We felt we needed to become uh, more mobile and more versatile as a group. And I think we've, uh, we've accomplished that. And with that being said, I think uh, the skill set that our guys bring to the table now, we're going to be able to play a much more modern game. And what I mean by that is, excuse me, getting our D much more involved in all facets of our offense. Um, so that's exciting to see. Uh, we feel our goaltending is going to give us a chance every night. And, and to be honest with you, our biggest concern going into this year uh, with the amount of new players we have, 11 new players, our biggest challenge was going to be how quickly we can get this group together uh, and buy into our culture and, uh, and come together as a group. And uh, I'd have to credit our two captains, Alex Bates and Braden Tuck, have done an incredible job with that. And obviously it helps with not having any COVID restrictions. So uh, our guys, uh, you know, are really close right now. And that's what we were trying to get to in this September preseason. Uh, and I think I say this every year that our league is really hard and the parity is, is razor thin. Uh, I think this year it's, you know, give AIC kudos. I mean, they're the team to beat. You got to go through them if you're going to win anything. But after that, I think it's, uh, it's going to be really exciting year start to finish with all the new rules in college hockey. I think the playing field is pretty level right now. Um, and it should uh, end up a pretty exciting year in uh, Atlantic hockey. Thank you, Coach. We'll go ahead and take questions. First one we have here is from Eric Dobritz. Eric, go ahead. Hi, CJ. How are you? Hey, Eric. How you doing? Good. Uh, you uh, so much for uh, going into this new season, nice and easy off the off the jump here. You got a pretty tough schedule. Just just tell me about that. I know scheduling is hard when you've got a building you share with other people, but man, you no breaks off the jump. Yeah, we have a. Very challenging. I think we only have 10 home games all year, uh, which uh, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, you know, Webster Bank, where we play our home games, uh, you know, they lost a year of revenue in terms of getting different, you know, shows in here. So it was pretty hard for me to nail down certain days that I knew we were going to be able to play. So uh, our non-league schedule, we're on the road the entire month of uh you know, uh, October, and it's, uh, I think our guys find it challenging and they're looking forward to it. Um, you know, we'll kind of see where we're at right off the bat. Questions? Okay, Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. Hey, CJ, how you doing? Hey, Ken, how are you? Good, thank you. CJ, uh, what, were, what were the things that you wanted to work on following last season? And do you think you have the personnel in the right places this year? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good question. You know, last year, it, it was so hard not having every player at your disposal uh, during games. Power play units weren't the same. PK units weren't the same. It's really hard to evaluate. Um, but I think any coach 
wants to become better in special teams because they have such a, a big part in winning and losing in today's game. So um, our special teams is something we're focusing on. And one other area that we've really put a heavy uh, emphasis on this year is face-offs. Um, we feel uh, we want to be a puck possession team and it's, uh, it's hard to play that way when uh, you're not winning you know, over 54, 55% of your face-offs. So that's an area that we're really trying to get better in, Ken. We have a follow-up. Go ahead, Ken. CJ, tell me about the process of going through the transfer portal, uh, especially in a big way this year. And uh, how do you get these guys uh, mixed in with your lineup? Yeah, that's, uh, that's part of the challenge that we felt as coaches. We talked about it a lot over the summer. You know, you have these, you know, grad transfers coming in for one year. Uh, you know, where do they fit? How are they going to fit? How are the guys that you have on your team going to accept them? Um, so we've put a lot of work into that. We've done a lot of team building stuff in the fall. Uh, the captains have organized a lot of stuff without the coaches. Just so everybody's getting to know each other. And uh, to be honest with you, Ken, I haven't, uh, everybody's really bought in. Uh, you know, and it'll be a little different, I'm sure, when we start playing and people are out of the lineup and people are into the lineup. But I think everybody right now has a great mindset um, and we're in it together. Another question from Ken. Ken, go ahead. CJ, can you give us a little taste of the transfers, you know, who might make some uh, immediate impacts? Yeah, I mean, um, I think they're all going to have an impact, the grad transfers in some way. Uh, Rourke Russell from Miami, Ohio has caught my eye. He's a really great skater on the back end. Um, Dakota Rob uh, from Michigan, extremely fast, probably the fastest player we've ever had here at Sacred Heart. Um, and you got Troy Conzo from, uh, my, from Colorado College. He's really good defensive player, really good on faceoffs. And uh, Dante Paleco is from Yale, he hasn't played in a while because Yale didn't play last year, but uh, he brings some offensive uh, things to the table that we're excited about. Um, those are the grad transfers that have caught my eye. Another question from Ken, go ahead. CJ, where do you see Sacred Heart's place in New England hockey? And you know, where, where do you think you can take this program? Um, I think we're a, a program that uh, is growing. Um, I think our, our school is growing tremendously. Um, and with that vision from our president, it's trickled down into, you know, athletics and the commitment that our school has shown, you know, from the board of trustees to the president, AD and so on down the line. I think our school is aligned to put, put hockey on the map. Um, I mean, we're building a 70, $75 million arena uh, that is going to be a destination place that we feel for anybody that loves hockey, whether it be a hockey player or a fan. So we have a ways to go, but I think we are continuing to climb that ladder. Coach, what does it mean to the program to have this new building going up? Yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting. Uh, you know, I drive by it every week to see the progress. A lot of our guys are taking classes, the business classes over on West Campus where it's getting built and they're excited about it. So uh, it's hard to, you got to keep an eye on where you're at right now. I believe you got to be where your feet are now. Um, and we're just, you know, focusing on this year, but it's very exciting to see what this school is doing with hockey and how it's going to affect not only the players here, but you know, the entire student body that they're going to have a place to, to go watch a game, state of the art building with uh, very fan interactive uh, in terms of things that they're going to be able to do at the arena. So it's exciting, uh, but we got to keep our focus on this year and where we're at now. Okay. Time for two more questions. First one's going to be Ken McMillan. Ken, go ahead. CJ, what's it like to hopefully put that COVID chaos behind us and uh, on a other point, um, how unfortunate is it to lose Robert Morris this year? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anybody more excited than putting COVID be behind us, you know, than any athlete that had to go through it last year. Um, 
we're really excited about it. We're all in the same locker room. We're lifting together. Uh, we're just being able to be a team and coaches are able to be a part of that fabric as well. So very excited about that and being very excited about kind of moving past COVID, very disappointed and, uh, you know, the other end of the spectrum and what happened to Robert Morris. I have a lot of respect for Derek and his staff and what they've done. And they had a tremendous year last year. I think it caught everybody just flat footed uh, to what happened. And I hope they come back. I know they're pushing for that and hopefully the, they're able to get that done. But um, it's gut wrenching to, to go through that. You never want to see a program, uh, any program, uh, you know, not be able to play. And I just feel bad for those student athletes that have given so much to that university. Um, the way it went down, left a bad taste in my mouth personally. Okay, and this will be our final question from Eric Dobritz. Eric, go ahead. CJ, uh, CJ, anything from COVID going forward that was positive that you can incorporate into your program? Like, hey, I didn't know we could do this or anything you said to yourself like that maybe you'd, you'd like to keep doing even though we're trying to get through, through this? I mean, we do a lot of uh, anyway, like small skill stuff, skill development. But with COVID last year, we really had a, at times go in much smaller groups and our guys really uh, gravitated towards that. So uh, once we get into the regular season, we're going to really uh, get into small groups on certain days and uh, work on, you know, finer details within each player's game that they really want to, to work at. Um, so that's one thing that I think we're going to carry over uh, very much so into our, you know, regular planning is a lot of small group stuff. Okay, coach, thank you for your time. We're going to let you go. Appreciate you stopping right. by. Thank you, everybody. Have a great year. Okay, that concludes today's uh, Atlantic Hockey Association Media Day. Um, thank you all for your participation. And just a reminder, uh, we will make a recording at today's call available uh, through our website and we'll send out a link to it. It'll be later this afternoon before that's ready, but we will get that out to you today. Thank you for coming. Have a great day.